Let's return now to the news of the biggest change to divorce law in 50 years. New laws in England and Wales will allow married couples to legally separate more quickly and without blaming each other. And with me is Joe Edwards, a family lawyer and former chair of the family law organisation Resolution. And I'm also joined by Simon Calvert, deputy director of the Christian Institute. Um, thank you both for coming along to talk to us about this. Joe, um, first of all to you, this is something that Resolution has been campaigning for for a very long time. That's absolutely right. So fundamentally, we've had the same divorce laws for 50 years. And what Resolution has said for approximately the past 30 years is they're not fit for purpose. Um, in fact, they're creating conflict from the get go. They're pitting couples against each other in this um, just looking at all the recrimination, all the blame. And so in effect, couples either have to assert that one of them has committed adultery or there has been unreasonable behaviour. And if not, they have to wait for a period of at least two years separation to elapse so that they can then uh, prove to the court's satisfaction that their marriage has broken down irretrievably. Is this a rebalancing in your opinion or does it make divorce potentially too easy? It's a rebalancing and I've seen lots of headlines this morning suggesting this is about divorce on demand, that this is making divorce easy. That's absolutely not the case. So as I've said already at the moment, the current law creates conflict from the get-go. If anything, the proposals which have been put forward today by government, uh, which are for a minimum period of six months from notifying that the marriage is broken down um, to being entitled to a decree of divorce, will take longer than some of our quickest undefended divorces at present. So most of the couples I see, and I've been practicing for 20 years in this area, they're shocked to come in and discover that they have to apportion blame, or if not, they have to wait for two years. It's simply not what they want. Um, Simon, to you on this point, what do you make of what Joe's been saying? If couples are sort of almost being funneled down this road of having to, to talk up the blame and the acrimony, that's surely not a good thing. I, I don't think that's the case. I don't think that the process of divorce causes acrimony. I think the acrimony leads to divorce. And one of the elements of a divorce process which creates the most acrimony is the arrangements over property and care of children. And none of that has been changed by this. But we are going to be making divorce very much easier. And I think that's a big mistake because human nature being what it is, if you make something easier, more people will do it. And there's an overwhelming body of social science evidence showing that children from broken homes do much worse than their counterparts in intact homes. So we should be doing all we can to encourage couples to stay together, not greasing the tracks to divorce. Uh, you know, if a couple is going to separate and divorce anyway, if they can do so picking up on that point about acrimony, doesn't that create a better basis for their ongoing parenting relationship in the case where children are involved and potentially create a, a better set of circumstances for the children of that dissolved marriage? So I, I want to say something on behalf of the person who doesn't want to get divorced. We have to remember that person in this equation. There are people whose spouses wish to divorce them, but they want to reconcile. What we're doing is we're taking away from those people the time and the opportunity to try and slow down that divorce to give them more time to reconcile. And what we're also saying to people who want to get to div a divorce is you don't even have to give a reason. And I think it's a basic matter of justice that if you want to end the most significant commitment of your entire life, that you ought to be required to give some reasons. Uh, Joe, can, I, can you pick up on that? I mean, I, 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 are, are we not in a situation where you don't have to give a reason? I mean, I, I fundamentally disagree. So first of all, I see the conflict day in, day out that the current law causes. The best proof is in those who have been through the process themselves. And I've seen multiple tweets, comments on social media this morning from people, including celebrities who've been through the process, who say it's just horrific. And it meant that the conversations about children and finances were, were very, very difficult. And we're not moving to a system of divorce on demand. One's seen cases like Tinny Owens last year. Can it be right that one says to somebody trapped in an unhappy marriage, you have to stay put in that marriage. Fundamentally, it can't be. It takes two people to stay in a marriage and to stay happy. So I absolutely support saving savable marriages. That has got to be any policy that the government looks at. But equally, where a decision has been made that a marriage has broken down irretrievably, a couple should be able to exit in a dignified way. And if only one of them feels that the marriage is broken down, they should still be able to do that. And there will be protections around ensuring that they're not exiting without final 
finance is being looked at, etc., etc. But fundamentally, that couple or that individual jo should be entitled to their decree of divorce. Joe, just uh, just picking up on the point that Simon made, though, he I think is is uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Simon. Uh, you're saying that in some instances, because this process will be contracted, if you like, will be much mm -hmm. faster. There won't be the opportunity and the time, perhaps, for a couple maybe to, to salvage the relationship. But that's fundamentally not right, because at the moment, as I've mentioned, the process can be quicker than is being advocated. So the quickest divorces I do at the moment take only four or five months where they are undefended. So the whole point of having this period of a minimum period of six months is precisely that, that a couple can stop, they can reflect, they can take stock, they will be signposted to counselling services, they will be signposted to understanding more about arrangements for children and about finances, so there will be that period of time yeah. that they can reflect. Uh, let me get Simon's response to all of that, and do you think that after, you know, 50 years, it, it is time for an update of some sort in the law surrounding divorce? Well, as Joe admitted, where the divorce is defended, of course, it does take longer, and that does give more time for reconciliation. The Tini Owens case is simply not relevant. The, the, that was simply a failure of her lawyers to provide any evidence of unreasonable breakdown, as the court itself commented upon. And I think if we think that marriage is important, then we should we should not be making it easier to get out of marriage than it is to get out of your mobile phone contract. I think that's a fundamental point, and I think people will be very concerned that, as with previous reforms, where we saw in the 70s and 80s the divorce rate triple, I'm concerned that we will see that divorce rate go up again. So it will be more of the harms, more of the acrimony and more of the damage to families. Joe, you're shaking your head. I mean, what, we, what can we, we possibly say on that? I mean, what we, evidence do you have that the, the divorce rate won't go up? We absolutely won't. And the evidence on that is clear. So there are many jurisdictions around the world, um, including in Australia, including in Scotland, um, 12 years ago, where they moved to not a purely uh, non-fault based system, but they reduced the periods of separation yes, and most of their divorce is there. Um, are now based on a period of separation. They saw in both of those jurisdictions a short-term increase in the number of divorces. That reflected couples waiting for the new law to come into effect. But in the longer term, it made absolutely no difference whatsoever to the divorce rates. So we are confident that that will be the experience in England and Wales. And it's about time we change the law to come into step with other countries. Uh, and Simon, you're also shaking your head now. But, I mean, Scotland did not adopt this system, so it doesn't provide us with a measure. I think it's just simply wrong to allow people to simply resign from their marriages. Uh, we have to reflect the significance and importance of the marriage commitment by requiring people to provide evidence for why the marriage should end. We have to give people time so that they can reconcile. As many people do during the, the divorce process, many people decide actually we're going to make it work. And we need to be looking at, instead of spending all of our time thinking about ways of making divorce easier, we should be spending our time thinking about ways of encouraging couples to keep their marriage promises and to stay together. OK, well, um, clearly two very different viewpoints, but thank you both for coming along to talk about this story today. Simon Calvert, Deputy Director of the Christian Institute, and also Joe Edwards, family lawyer and former chair of the Family Law Organisation Resolution. Thank you very much for your time.